or watch has a lot of maps which have a lot of different ways to stand out from each other. This be through the art, the geometry, or maybe something even more special which is what I'm here to talk about, which is as I am going to dub it, map gimmicks, which is something that can change the gameplay which only appears on these few maps. And I'm throwing in some other cool stuff that doesn't affect gameplay but is still very interesting to see on these few maps. So let's start with one of the most classic ones we got, which is the Hollywood Elevators. Which what they do is kind of simple, you stand on it and you go up. And Hollywood is a map that got three of these in total to get you to high ground. Which just saves them a lot of space instead of making stairs. Even back here, Midtown got one of the elevators to get you to high ground. But if you're new to Overwatch, you might not know this, but elevators didn't always used to work like this. And I can show you this since the C-tier version of Lee Jang never got its elevators updated to how they work now in most maps. Which was kinda simple, they just kept going up and down constantly. So if you were in a hurry to get to high ground, you sure gotta hope that they were at the bottom when you needed to get there. But let's not forget the last one here in Volskaya, which of course does the same as all the other ones, which is just to get you to the high ground quickly. But Volskaya has another special object, which are these, the floating platforms, which is pretty simple. You just stand on it and then it will transport you to wherever it's going. Even Route 66 is a very simple platform type. So if we move to one of the later maps they've released, you can see stuff like this, which is here in Town, which has these platforms which seem to be tied to this turbine. And when that turbine goes around, then so do the platforms. But some platforms even make more sense when it comes to the place they're in, is here in Rialto. Which are these boats going down the stream. Which actually have the very specific gameplay purpose of saving you while you're fighting on a bridge like this. So you can then ride them to get back to safety again. Which is of course the better option than falling into the water and dying instantly. Since now the hero seems to have found it useful to learn how to swim. And quickly finishing it up with all these platforms. Let's take a look at this guy. The Blizzard World Griffin from Flight to Duskwood, which overall with gameplay doesn't do much for you, but they're just cute to have around. Goodbye. Something more interesting is here on Busan Mega Base, which got these walls, which will about every 10 seconds go up or down, which of course if you're unlucky with the timing, might screw up your gameplay in a way. But Busan has more too than just these walls. We got this really cool train in the downtown area of Busan which can do one cool thing, which is to kill players. So if you see it coming, stay out of its way. But the Busan train isn't alone being an object that can hurt players. Here in Oasis City Center, we also got these really cool cars, which is encouraging one thing, don't play in the road. Unless of course, you got an ability that can make you invulnerable. This then gives you this cool thing, where you can use these cars to catch a ride to get to the point faster. And Kanesaka also has these cars, but compared to Oasis they're even more the way because you need the mobility to even get up here. But going back to Oasis we can see this, or watch his first jump pad, which how it works is pretty simple. You just go onto the pad and it boops you upwards, which is really great because it can do the same as the elevators do, which is just get you to high ground quickly. But this is the only core game mode appearance the jump pad has. Besides for this, you only really see it in the deathmatch maps. So let's get through these quickly, starting with Chateau Guillard which has a total of two jump pads near the water. Malavento with one near the edge of the map and one inside the back of the church. We got one here on the outside of Petra and one on the inside. But Petra has something even more special about it, which is this destructible floor, which is a very cool gameplay element to have because it's a way of shaping the environment. But of course, if you feel like it, you can also use it to kill other players with. But thankfully, a map like Black Forest is also allowed to have cool destructible objects like these doors. So before we go to the final map gimmick, I just want to show you one of my favorite effects that happened on King's Row. So whenever the final point is capped on King's Row, these lights will turn on. And while you're about to cap the point itself, you can see it start charging up because it's getting ready to release the EMP, which is just amazing since this is the only payload that will change like this and have an animation for being capped. But finally we got into the most creative of all these gimmicks which is this outside area of Horizon, which has the very cool effect of putting you into low gravity. Which for comparative integrity is a really bad effect, but for the fun factor, it's amazing. Like just look at the massive jumps you can do in this area. There's no else you can do this unless you change some custom game settings. A lot of Overwatch's maps have a lot of creative gimmicks to it that never get used. But just seeing them willing to experiment with stuff like this is just amazing, since it shows how far they can truly push the game. 
but thank you for letting me show you some of my favorite gimmicks that Overwatch has, since I really want people to start talking about all the cool stuff this game can do. So next time you play Overwatch, think about the cool things that can make the map stand out from each other. Since the stuff I showed is really underused, how much work they likely put into it, 